Shalom welcome back. Now we're going to be doing lesson number 21. Alright? Vayikach, and he took Israel. So Israel is going to be the subject here. Vayikach Israel, and Israel took et kol heharim, all of the cities, ha'ele of these, Vayishev, and he dwelled, Israel, so, and Israel dwelled, Bechol, and all, Arei, Heemori, the cities of the Amorites. Alright, so now, let's go and let's break this apart, and let's see the grammar that we're going to be pulling out and see what's going on here. Alright, so first off, once again, we're going to be looking at here, this is the Vav conversive, which means here we have our pronoun. Now, if you remember in the other videos that we've done, and if you remember in the other lessons we've done, you can remember there are two laws that we have with relationship to finding the root. Okay, of course, we have Kof Chet which is the two letters we have left. Now, of course, we could do rule number one. And rule number one is, we could go through the three possibilities, which is a total of six, excuse me. Uh, the six possibilities, is it a nun that's missing in the front? Is it a yud that's missing in the front? Is it a va that's missing in the middle? Or is it a yud that's missing in the middle? Is it a hey that's missing at the end? Or are we going to repeat the last root letter, okay? And this, we know, is the one-step way of knowing that we have with regard to trying to find the root. However, we have, remember, the other indicators, the fact that we see a dagish, it's in the chaf, so that means the root is missing at the front. However, the problem is, it's not going to be these two, and this is where we have to learn our leather exception to the rule, which is the Lamed beginning that drops off. Okay, normally a Lamed doesn't, but in this case, Lamed does. Okay, so we have to understand that the root here is Lamed, and that normally Lameds don't drop off in the beginning of a root, like the word Lamad, which is the word to learn, that does not drop off. Okay. So here we say Ve'ikach, and he took, so here we have to go and look at this one. Since we know the pronoun is masculine third person, we're looking to see if this was going to fit. And since Israel is a proper noun, so here we have a proper, uh, proper noun, all right, we know that it's masculine, we know it fits the the parameters here, all right? So now we know it, we can translate it and Israel took, all right? The next thing we have is we see the word et, okay? Now, knowing the fact that we have et, we can possibly be a preposition or et can possibly be the direct object marker. Or it can possibly be, as we will also learn in other videos, uh, which is the the um, the et of equality. It can it can be used to connect two nouns that are equal in nature. In this case, we are going to be saying, well, and he took. There's obviously something he took, because et is pointing to a definite direct object. All right, so we see that this is the definite direct object marker. So we know that there is no translational value because Ed does not have any translational value. However, because we know it's the de definite direct object marker, we know we're going to be looking for a definite noun, okay? So here we have our noun construct, which starts here and is going to end here, okay? 
Um, and I'll show you what we're going to be seeing here in this case here. Um, in, 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 a, in a normal function, the noun construct, uh, we have to say literally it's just here and here, and I'll tell you why. Um, call hey how rain. So call is all or every. Okay. So we know the concept of call, which is a noun, is a concept of the entirety of something. So it can be used for all or every. In this case, it's every. So we have to just take every in this case. Hey harim. So what is going on here? Okay. So hey harim. This hey is a definite article. So here we have the definite article. Why is the definite article have a segul? Okay, why does it have the segul? Okay, it has a segul um, because we have an ein, we have a guttural, so therefore this is why this noun is not going to have the kamats like we would think. Okay, so here we know that in this we have left here is the word irim. Okay, so irim is the word for cities. Now, this is something we have to know about nouns. Okay, uh, with regard to masculine nouns, we have to understand the rule of how masculine nouns are going to function and work. And so, in order to understand nouns and how they function or work, we have to remember that nouns have to be placed into two categories, okay? Uh, nouns are going to be placed into masculine or into feminine, okay? And then we're going to have to place them in two more categories, which is going to be based upon the issue of singular, and plural. So nouns in Hebrew focus on two categories masculine, feminine, singular, and plural. Alright? So let's take the noun here, ear. Okay? The noun ear is a masculine noun or is it a feminine noun? Okay? The noun ear is a feminine noun. Okay? Why is it a feminine noun and not a masculine noun? It looks masculine, right? But why do I put it in the feminine? Because in Hebrew, feminine nouns are names of cities. Feminine nouns are dual appendages on a body part. For example, hands and feet, ears, those are feminine. And of course, countries are feminine. And then of course, you have feminine nouns which begin with, sorry, which end with either hey or a tav. Okay, so the most indicators for feminine nouns is going to always be these indicators. The hey or the tav is going to be placed at the end of the noun. This is an irregular noun and it's very special because why? Because when we put it in the plural form, it looks masculine. So here, when we say this, irim, okay, that what we're saying here is the fact that the cities, all right, that this is a plural noun in this case here, okay, but it looks masculine. However, it's regarded as feminine. Why? Because the word irim is a feminine noun, even though it looks masculine in its plural form. The same thing we'll find with regard to the masculine noun. And I'll give you a good version of it. Shochan. Okay, Shochan, you can see, looks masculine, right? But when we put it in the plural form, it's Shochanot. So it's feminine looking, but yet it's a masculine noun. These are called your irregulars, okay? So you got to memorize them. Um, the major things we're going to have to memorize with regard to nouns is nouns come in basically um, three forms, okay? You get your regular noun, 
which is going to be your typical masculine and typical feminine, which is the one that you're going to see is going to have the hay or the tav at the end. And your typical masculine is one's going to look masculine and remain masculine even in the plural form. You have your irregular nouns, which is they look masculine, but they're actually feminine. And even though they look masculine, they're feminine. Just like here we have a masculine, which looks feminine. Here we have a feminine, which looks masculine. So we got to remember, we have uh, the secondary with the irregular forms. The third is your irregulars, which are what we call neutral or neuter. Okay, these are your nouns which are, they look and can be placed both in a feminine or in a masculine way. It all depends on the contextual way that we're going to be seeing these things used. So that's going to help us understand uh, the issue. So we have to know that uh, in a normal form, which I'll place here with regard to the nouns, if I had, for example, the word uh, mishpacha, Mishpacha. Mishpacha is the singular form. In the plural form, we would see this. Mishpachot. Okay? So you see the He is dropped off, and then we see Ot used in the plural form. Where in the masculine form, uh, with regard to a noun, uh, such as this, Yelid, okay, where Yeladim, we're going to see the Yud and the Mem, plays the masculine plural ending. So here the Im, don't be, you know, don't be confused and think this is masculine. you got to remember that the word Ear is a feminine noun, and therefore it has to be regarded in a feminine form. Alright, now with regard to the next part, um, since we have a demonstrative pronoun that finishes the statement, ha'ele, this has to have the he article because it's in agreement with the noun here, okay? So ha'ele is the word for these. Okay, don't say the these because that's not what it's saying. It just has to agree with the de definiteness of the actual noun. So, kol heharim ha'eli. All of these cities. Okay, so that's what it's saying here. All of these cities. So, sometimes we might find the hey article being put, but we have to remember that it's not going to be translated because it's only because the pronoun is in agreement with what is going on with the noun here. Now we have the next one. Vayeshev. So here we have the Vav conversive. Next, once again, we have the Yud. We know that this is the pronoun. So what you have left is shin and bet, okay? So because you have shin and bet left over, what's the rule? Once again, you have two ways of going about it. You can go through the six possible root letters that can be missing, or you can look at the indicator with his, the tzeray. The tzeray here indicates the fact that we have a yud that's missing in the front, okay? You can still do the same thing if you went through the six possible indicators to see where the root, what the root is, but this is the easy way of going about it as well. I prefer to go through the six indicators just because, you know, it's you're going to force yourself into realizing the roots that and the connectors that you're going to be doing with relation to roots that are missing. So here you have the root yashav, and yashav means to dwell or to stay, okay? So, and he stayed, once again, I come over here and I look at the pronoun and I'm saying, okay, Israel, 
third person masculine the singular, it agrees. So here, and is Rael um, stayed, okay, or dwelled, you could say as well. The word yeshav means to basically be like there, to be sitting, dwelling in a, in a, in a, in a, in a position by which you're not moving. That's basically the concept. You're in a, you're in a non-moving situation, okay, which is where you have the sitting, the dwelling, okay. So the next part is bachal. So here we have, right here, we have a preposition. Now this is a preposition that is what we call um, an affixed, okay? Um, there are two types of prepositions you have. You have prepositions that have to be attached to nouns, and you have, in, you have the separable preposition. So you have an inseparable, which is what we have here with Bechol, versus a separable, which is what we find when we see, for example, the word El or Al being used. So Bachal. So how we have now we have to go through the questions of what does this mean? What does Bachal mean? Okay, because if you do have uh, to fight through because you're trying to remember some things, just go through all the possible prepositions. Okay, uh, it can mean among. It can mean at. It can mean on. It can be by. By the way, if you ever see this as by. It's always instrumentally, okay? So this is, there we go, instrumentally. So instrumental means, always means that like, it's like he hit him with the sword, uh, excuse me, yeah, by and with, they're going to be the instrumental concept, okay? So here you're going to have this, Okay, he hit him by the sword, or with the sword. That's the cause that we're finding. This is the instrumental uh, preposition we're looking for. Um, it can mean against. And it can mean in. Okay, so this is kind of one of those words, it's kind of like what we have in English with certain words that have like a broad range of how they can be utilized. You just have to memorize the broad ranges here. So Bechol, so here it means in, in all, so in all, are, so here it's the same man that we had up here where hey are so here we have the word ear, okay? So ear, in its plural form, is the word irim, all right? And here, what we're seeing is, we're seeing this is the noun construct form, okay? The noun construct is always going to eliminate the mem sofit at the end, and we're going to see the tsere post here. So that's where you get the word are, okay? Is we're eliminating the mem and we're putting the tsere here. So we know this is the cities in its plural. So in all, and this is going to go and be defined. So here's the beginning of the uh, now construct and here is the end. If we look here, we see the definite article, ha. Okay, so we know that this is a definite noun construct. So, bechol ere ha emori. So now we know that this is going to be a definite um, noun construct. So, in all, so here we're going to put the word of. Because remember, noun constructs are the words that we use for the of. Uh, of um, statements, okay? So, cities, okay, and all of, so we're going to put the word the cities, and then we're going to put of the Amorites, 
Okay? The word Hehemori, the Amorites. Okay? So it's being specific as to the actual genealogy of these people. Okay? So you're going to find yourself realizing that, remember, when it comes to noun constructs, the is going to be placed in a few parts of your writing and translating. Why? Because it's necessary in English, but it's not necessary for Hebrew. Hebrew always puts the definite article at the end of the noun construct if the noun construct has to be definite. And so just remember that part. So, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And uh, I'll see you next time as we go into chapter 22 and we begin learning more uh, about Biblical Hebrew and uh, as we dive into more and also dissecting more of what we are to understand grammatically, to understand the concepts, what we're going to be learning and what are the grammatical elements that take place and also how to dissect many, many more things with regard to the roots. I'll see you next time.